Let's do our usual walk around. We're going to start over here at the Pi. Uh, the first wire is hooked to pin 39 and it is a ground. It comes over here to the negative side of the, an LED. We've got a standard limiting resistor on there to keep the current down. We go through the LED back to the red wire. The red wire comes over here to pin 37 which we're going to configure as an output pin on the Pi and that's pretty much it. The rest of it's all software. So let's go look at the software and we'll do a demo. The program in front of you is written for an RPI 3, hardware version 3. It's in Python 3 and the the function of this program is to report the GPIO pins, the status, in both graphics and text mode. These are just some of the modes that you can have. You have in equals 1, out equals 0, and so forth. Uh, pins 3 and 5 have built-in pull-up resistors and they show up as a 1 by default. So I've got to have a workaround on that uh, because the RPI, it, it defaults to input, but in fact when you attempt to use it, uh, it doesn't. So you have to explicitly declare it as an input. I'll show you how I did that in a second. Okay, from graphics we're going to import everything. This is John Zella's graphic.py. It's a very good uh, but simple graphic library. We're going to import all of the GPIO stuff from the GPIO library. We're going to import the time function because we need the sleep mode, uh, mostly for the demonstration. It's not really essential for the actual operation. We're going to set the GPIO to board mode and we're going to do GPIO setup on pins 3 and 5 as inputs. 3 and 5 have pull-up resistors by default and they cause some problems so I'm explicitly defining them here in this case. The rest of these I'm defining just so that I don't get error messages so I define all of the pins as input and then I'm going to redefine some of them as output as I need. So what you can do is define everything as input and then redefine it for whatever you're going to need it, output, serial, what have you. Okay, let's scroll down a bit. So we declare our GPIO setup, our input list, which we just looked at. That was a long one. We're going to say pull up down is pull down. Uh, the setup for the output list is GPIO out and then I'm going to set them to false just to make sure that they're off when we start up the program. And then this is just a variable on the uh, vertical position of the output. Let's look at our first function. It's this uh, GPI decode that I wrote and you pass it the code and the pin. And what this is going to tell us is how the pin is set up. Is it set up as an input pin, an output pin, as hardware, uh, PWM, as serial, as SPI, I2C, uh, whatever. So that's what this program is going to do for us. It's going to send us back what type of pin or how the pin has been set up. So as you know, a lot of pins on the Pi can be set up in many different ways and we need to know that. Okay, so we get the code and we get the pin. Uh, the color is set to blank. These are two dummy variables because I haven't finished all of these others. I don't use SPI and I2C very much, so I haven't tested those and haven't filled them out. But the first part here, okay, so these are dummy, dummy variables. The first part here is for input pins and output pins. So if the code that's returned back is a 1, we know it's an input pin. Uh, I'm going to set the default color to yellow. If there's power on the pin, I'm going to set it to green. So it shifts from yellow to green if there's an input on the pin. And then I'm going to return the value of the, a text code and then the GPIO input of the pin. So in other words, the value of it and then the color that I've just set up here. Otherwise, if the code is zero, then that means it's set to be an output pin. And I set the color default to light sky blue 2. If there's uh, the pin is high, if it's true, then I set the color to orange, and then I return that. And again, the rest of this is not done, but I would do the same thing for you know SPI, I2C, etc., etc. So now we know whether the pin is set to be input, output, or what have you. Let's scroll down to the next. This function tells us the status of the pin, and we pass it the pin number. 
we have these global variables, message, message, text, and color. And first we're going to initialize those to nothing. And then this is a variable that if I turn on true, I will get standard output from Python. I'll get that running list of output from my, from my uh, program. However, I don't usually want that because it causes a tremendous lag between what's happening on the Pi and what the output is. Uh, and it just consumes a lot of stuff. And the whole reason of writing this program is so I get a nice graphical output and not, you know, just a bunch of scrolling text. So right now I have it set to false so I won't get any uh, output other than my graphic output. If the pin is in this range, 1 and 7, so these are the 3.3 power supply pins, then if this were true I would print this statement power pin, the pin number at 3.3 volts. Uh, I will set the color to red and then the message text power pin uh, say number 1 at 3.3 volts and otherwise what will happen is if a uh, pin is in 2 or 4, that's the 5 volt power pins, then uh, if this were true I would print that statement uh, uh, and I will always do set the color to red and then the message text power pin string at 5 volts. Let's scroll down a bit. The power pins aren't that interesting since there's no real logic to them. It just, it's just a fact of life. Uh, if the pin is in 9, 25, 39, 6, 14, 20, 30, and 34, those are ground pins. For ground pins, I have set the color to be black, and the message is ground pin plus the string of the pin, so it's any one of those numbers. Uh, next, otherwise, if the pin is in this range, these are GPIO pins. They can either be set to input, output, or other things. So we're going to send it to our GPIO decode program that we looked at earlier. Uh, we're going to call this function, which is going to tell us uh, what it was set as. So is it set as input, output, whatever, based on the pin and then the pin number. And we're going to get back three variables. Uh, we're going to set the color to C, so the, this uh, function is going to return back the color in C, and we're going to set C to that. And then we're going to create a message text to pass, which is GPIO string of pin, which is a pin number, set as string A, so it's, it's set as either input or output, that's what's in A, and B is the status, so is it high, low, or what have you. Let's scroll down some more. Otherwise, if the pin is 27 or 28, those are do not connect pins. There should not be anything happening on those, so it just prints out a message and then the string, the pin number, and otherwise there's some kind of an error happening. Okay, so let's look at this graphic out statement. Graphic out is what's going to create our output. We're going to pass it x and y coordinates and x2 and y2 coordinates. This is the beginning of the text box and this is the end of the text box. So this is the lower left corner and this is the upper right corner of a text box. We have some global variables, the message text, uh, the line, so that's vertically where, it's, where it is in the window, and then the color. And so what we're going to do is Y is our vertical position and line is going to tell us how far up and down to move that, to move that uh, position. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to erase a position in our window to write to. So it sounds kind of backwards, but we're going to make sure that the space that we're writing to is empty, it's blank. So we're going to create an object called Erase. It's going to be a rectangle. It's going to be based on these coordinates that we were passed. So X, Y plus 7. The plus 7 is where the dot's going to be. It's shifted uh, 7 pixels. The point is the uh, upper right corner of the box is going to be at this offset by 250 and Y offset by minus 7. Next our object we're going to fill it with gray and this is the same color gray as the background of the screen of the window and that will basically cause an erasure because we're going to print the same color over the, as the background over whatever is there so it's going to look like all background. Uh, erase set the outline to gray uh, I don't have a comment on this one, but 
if you comment out this line when you're debugging the program or when you're setting things up, you can see a little gray outline around the box that you're going to write to, and that makes it really easy to see where the, where the uh, text is going to be. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to draw to the window all of this that we did right here. So we're going to gr draw a gray rectangle where we're going to write to. So we're going to blank out that area. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the message. We're going to create an object that's a message, a text, and we're again going to use these points offset and we're going to put our message into that object. We're going to set the type font to Arial. Uh, we're going to set the size to 10. Now this size can vary of course. We're going to set the text color to black and again kind of arbitrary and then we're going to draw that text to the window. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to draw, create an object of a circle and it's a point again based on the inputs and it's five pixels in diameter. We're going to fill it with the color that we passed it from up here. We're going to draw that and then we're going to increment the line by 15 pixels and then we're going to return. And so this is our graphic output. This is going to be the thing that creates the graphic window that's going to give us the, the depiction of what's happening with our pins on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's scroll down again. These next two functions could be combined, but I did it just I separated them for clarity. These are the odd pins on the Pi, so the left side of the Pi as I like to call it, and the even pins, or the right side pins on the Pi. The function starts out with a global line, so this is the vertical position. The line is going to be set to zero. Uh, our first X position is 10, our Y position is 5, our upper right corner position is zero, and our uh, the y coordinate of that is minus 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for uh, pin, the odd pins in the range between 1 and 40 incremented by 2. So these are all the odd pins on what I call the left side. Uh, the pin status, we're going to execute that pin status function uh, using this variable, the pin odd, and then the graphic out is going to be the routine that we just looked at and we're going to pass it that x, y, x2, y2, and that's it. Okay, so we'll run through that for the, all of the odd pins. The even pins are pretty much the same thing. Uh, all the functions, all the parts of this function are the same, except the offsets for the x and y have to be different because we're going to print two columns, and this is the rightmost column. So, then we're going to do this. We're going to start at 2, go to 41. By 2's, that'll give us all the even pins. Then we'll call our pin status, so pin even. Graphic out, so this is pretty much the same thing, except we're using even pins rather than odd pins as last time. And then we'll return that. Okay, so this is our window, we're, cre we're creating our window, we're going to call it RPI GPIO status board. It's going to be this many pixels, X and Y. We're going to set the background to gray 95, that's important that it's the same color as our erasure rectangle. This is just a debug statement that's kind of fun to print out, you can see what the values of all these are. And then we'll start with uh, initializing the values on the window. We'll just uh, execute the odd pins and even pins functions. And that'll put up just the uh, initial data. And then we'll print a statement that says program paused, click in the window to resume. So that way we can wait till we're ready to see the results. And then we'll go here and this is the pause statement. This uh, will wait until there's a click in the window. And at that point, yeah, the program will resume. Now these are the two demo routines. This is part of what you would rewrite for your own for your own use. But this just loops through everything and checks all the pins and sees what the conditions are and then outputs them so that we can see. And we will also uh, do the output on pin 37 down here so you can see the LED blink on and off. 
This one will show the status of the uh, dot changing color. So this first example, we're going to set pin 24 on to true. And then we're going to just run from 0 to 6, just run through this loop. This is the routine that will uh, re re update. I guess that's a word re update. Re update our our uh, screen. We're going to sleep for one second so that we can see the results. Otherwise, it'll fly by too fast. And then we're going to ask if the input of 24 is true. Uh, we're going to change it to false. Otherwise, if it's false, we're going to change it to true. So in other words, we're just going to turn it on and off, on and off for this demo. The 37, pin 37, is pretty much true. the same. We're going to set it to true. For the range between 0 and 12, we're going to refresh the odd pins. We're going to go to sleep for one second. If the pin is true, we're going to set it to false. If it's false, we're going to set it to true. We're going to go through that from 0 to 12. And when we're done, we're going to drop out. We're going to do our GPIO cleanup, which resets all the pins. We're going to wait until there's a mouse click. And when that happens, we're going to close the window and we'll print done. So that's the software in detail. Let's do a demo and see how it actually works. Well, let's take a look at this in operation. I've set up the LED so we can see it over here. I know it's a little bit dark, but when the light comes on, you should be able to see it pretty clearly. And let's hit the F5 button, start it running. This is the screen that we have built with all of our routines and so forth. I'll move it down here so we can see a little more easily. It's paused right now. It's waiting for me to click in the window to, to activate it. But first of all, pin 24 will go on and off. We'll be able to see this change from blue to orange and the status change from 0 to 1 uh, as we turn that on and off in our routine that we did up here. Uh, the other one is pin 37. We'll be able to see that change from blue to orange and the status will go from 0 to 1 and then the LED will turn on and off. So let me do that. Activate it. You can see it. Orange and it's going 0 and 1. And then when that's done, it comes over here and we're going orange 1 and you can see the light going on and off in combination with that. And when it's done, if we click on the window, we'll get an indication that we finished normally. We'll get that done statement down here printed and that's it. Okay, well that's the status program for your RPI GPIO pins. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your Raspberry Pi programming.